Green continues to teach us about waves. And we want to re remember some things about waves. We want to remember V equals lambda F. What are all these variables? What's V? Velocity. Velocity. So what are the units of that? Meters per second. Uh, lambda, what's that? Wavelength. Wavelength. What are the units of that? An SI unit is going to be meters. And wavelength is how long a wave is. It's literally what it says. And then uh, F. What is F? Frequency. And what are the SI units of frequency? Hertz. Second inverse. It's hertz, which is inverse seconds, which is equal to 1 over seconds. Or you might see this written as seconds to the minus 1. See, these are key terminologies for waves. And this works for pretty much any wave that you're going to talk about. V equals lambda F. Uh, we use a special letter if we're talking about light. If we're talking about light, what do these letters change? V becomes C if you're talking about light, because Z, uh, C is the speed of light. Okay, so some important speeds to know for waves. Uh, speed of sound. Anybody know what the speed of sound is? I think, I think Caduce up here was saying 343 meters per second. And then the speed of light is? 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. So all very, very useful quantities, useful things to know. Other parts of waves that we should be aware of. We should be aware of K. K is equal to 2 times pi divided by the wavelength. It's a shorthand for something called a wave number. Yes? What is C? C is the speed of light. Okay. And then we also have another equation that we can use for speed of a wave. And instead of uh, V equals lambda F, we also have V equals uh, omega over K. So that's how we can write it in terms of angular speed, uh, or angular velocity, and K, which is the wave number. This is another way to write wave speed. And these are shorthand notations. These Ks and these Vs just make it easier to do some more advanced calculations when you move on in physics. So we learn them in introductory physics. Last key equation that we want to know, really, for chapter 16, uh, that's going to be super, super important, uh, is the periodic wave equation. So this is how we write an equation of a wave. Periodic wave equation, y, is a function of two variables, x and t. X is position, T is time. Y is going to give you the height of your wave. That's going to be equal to A times a sine wave times KX minus plus omega T plus phi. It's a general equation for a wave. Super useful in more advanced physics. Okay, so we've got K here is that wave number. Does it have to be minus over plus or minus over plus? Minus over plus is the convention. You always want minus over plus. So what it works out to is when you start doing calculations with these and writing out these equations, the top one gives you a wave that's traveling in the positive direction. And the bottom one gives you a wave that's traveling in the negative direction. So when you subtract this omega t, you're traveling to the right. If you add the omega t, you're traveling to the left. So that's why they use that convention. K is the wave number. Oh, sorry. Yes, sir. So I, I think there's another equation, right, depending on the starting position. Like the sign becomes a cos. So, uh, there are other equations you could use for the wave. Depending on starting positions, you could use a cosine. But you could always use this equation along with the phase. Because the purpose of the phase 
is to shift where your wave starts. So if you have a side wave, what is sine of zero? Anyone remember what that is? What? Sine of zero. zero. Sine of zero is zero. If you want your wave to start off and have some bite at the position zero, you can use a different phase, or you could use a different trigonometric function. You could use cosine. And when we actually start doing this, we start writing it in combinations of sines and cosines and use imaginary numbers, and it gets, it gets a little more complicated. But yes, you can use cosine as well. OK, so let's, let's look at this wave number. Wave number, what was wave number? Wave number was 2 times pi divided by lambda. So that's what we're plugging in for k. That is the wave number. And we're going to multiply it by what? What's, what is x? x is a position, so we're going to multiply that by an x. And when we do that, what units are we going to get out of this? We're going to get 2 pi, which is 2 pi radians, times, times x, which is meters, and we're going to divide by wavelength. What are the units of wavelength? Meters. meters. So you're going to have meters over meters. What happens to the meters? They cancel out. You're left with just Two pi radians, so radians. When you're doing these calculations, you need to make sure that your calculator is in radians. If you're not in radians for these wave calculations, you're going to get the wrong answers. Let's make sure that, that that continues through. So omega t. Omega. What was omega? Angular, Angular velocity is... Uh, we can use this as V times K. Right? If I come up here and look at V equals omega K, I'm going to solve that for omega. Omega equals V times K. So we can see what units we get out of this. We have omega V times K. What are the units of V going to be? Meters per second. What are the units of K going to be? Radians divided by meters. I think we're lost at some point. What are the units of this? So wave number, way up here. 2 pi divided by lambda. Units of that. 2 pi is radians. What are the units of lambda? Meters. So that's where I get this radians over meters. What happens to the meters? They cancel out. They cancel out and I get radians per second for omega. We found that in chapter, you could look at chapter, I think it's nine or 10, and that's what omega was as well, radians over seconds. So I take the omega, multiply it by t. What are the units of t? Seconds. What's radians per second times seconds? Radians. So I got out just plain radians. Okay. Radians per second times seconds, and I got out just radians. So what does your calculator have to be in? Radians. Radians. Make sure your calculator is in radians. Okay, so that's the periodic wave equation. <coughs> Questions on those equations? No? Okay, let's look at something that uh, people asked about on the quiz. Concept of resonance. And we're going to see an example of this in class today, too. Okay, I'm setting up resonance. Resonance is just, I think of it as musical instruments and trying to set things up so that there's a wave that fits inside of a pipe, or a wave that fits on a string. If I'm playing violin and I pluck the violin string, I pluck it in a certain way to set up a wave, to put a wave onto it to make a sound. If I'm playing a church pipe organ, anybody ever seen those big organ organs in churches? And they have a pipe, you hit the pipe, you hit it at the right frequency, and it gives you a loud booming sound. That is resonance. That's what this is right here. This is resonance. We can set up resonance in this tube, and we can hear what it actually sounds like. Let's do that.
fear resonance before we see it. I want you to tell me when you hear resonance inside of this tube. Did you hear resonance? Yeah. Tell me when to stop when you hear resonance. So at this point, I am fitting a wave or some multiple of waves inside of this tube. So I have the beginning, uh, probably the top of a wave, going down to the middle of a wave, back to the top of a wave, inside of here. And when I do that, I get the loud moving sound. And I can set up multiple waves inside of here if I do multiple, if I find another resonance. Uh, I think the tube's a little too short. So right now I'm playing a frequency of 100. How do I put more waves into this? What do I do to the frequency? Higher frequency or lower frequency? How many say higher frequency? High, uh, so frequency is how fast your wave is going. So if you're a super, super high frequency, that means you have a lot of little pulses. If you're a low frequency, you have fewer pulses. So do I want more pulses or fewer pulses? I want more pulses, so I want a higher frequency. If I increase the frequency, we can start making dogs angry. Let's double the frequency. We're going 200. Does Professor Rip just have his dolls down here? Hmm? Does Professor Rip just have his dolls down here? Uh, I hope so. Here we go. There's that. There's that first resonance. We should be able to get another resonance. That's resonance, that's what it sounds like. We can see what resonance looks like as well. We're fitting tubes inside of this. Uh, you might have to get up and, and, and see this one. So let me switch these out. Come on, come on up to the front. Seriously, get up, come up to the front. Okay, I want to set up a wave in this string and I want to see what it looks like. The first wave that I want to set up, I want to set it up so that the frequency is the same, uh, the wavelength that I have on this string is the same length as the string. Okay? So to do that, I kind of have to, I have to know some things. I have to do some math. Uh, what's the equation for uh, velocity of a wave? <coughs> velocity equals lambda times f. I want to know what frequency I'm going to play through this to set up the very, very first wave that I want on here. So there are some things I could plug in. Uh, I want to know what frequency I'm going to do. So I'm going to solve this for frequency. So I divide both sides by lambda. I don't know if this is going to work. I just set this up this morning. This might completely fail. If it does, the physics is broken and we should all just give up. OK, f equals v over lambda. What kind of waves am I playing? It's a sound wave. Okay, so what's the speed of that? 343 meters per second. Meters per second. How long do I want the wave to be? I want the wavelength to be the length of the string. How long is that string? How long? One meter. How do you know that? Because there's a meter stick, so it's about a meter. Okay. So what frequency? 343. What? 343. Should set up a wave on this. kind of hard to see. So what we're going to do, we're going to take it down, and instead of seeing the full wave, we're going to see if we can see partial waves. 
can set up nodes and anything. So we're going to go down to 34. And we can set up a way. See? Starting point, ending point, middle point. So I don't have a full way. I'm not going up, then down, then back up. I have a portion of a way set up inside of this shape. If I want to set up more, what can I do to this? I can increase. I want to set up more. What can I do? Uh, as I keep going, it becomes harder and harder to see. You can see them in there. What are those? It's three. No. And what we can really do is have a lot of fun. Uh, is anybody susceptible to seizures? Nobody? Seizures? <laughs> if you're susceptible to seizures, you can step back uh, and, and not watch. Uh, Alyssa, can you get the light for me? Whoa. So what we can do is we can try to match the strobe light frequency to the frequency of the string. So when I do that, see when it's off, you can see the string. But if I can get it exactly the same, and this is a crappy strobe light, so it's always very difficult to do this. But as I increase the frequency more and more, I get it to slowly match with the string. Uh, they should. And now the frequency is off again. Let's, let's see if we can do it with Oh wow, how many strings do I have there? Looks like, looks like four. Why does it look like four? It's the way the light is hitting it. Strobe light effect. Stick your finger in there. Just one string. Does it hurt? No. But we can, we, as we get the frequency to match, if I can, they really got to buy me a new strobe light. Now, it does. Because we're oversampling. Now I can make the string stand still. Is the string straight? Does it look like it's standing still? Yeah. 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 Is it standing still? No. Yeah. Move, yeah. right? Good choice of fingers, too. <laughs> it's there. It's there. It's there. It looks like a sound. Okay. So this is resonance, too. This is just resonance combined with light resonance. You're making your eyes match with the frequency of the string that you're seeing so that it looks like it's not moving. You ever look at a ceiling fan and sometimes it looks like it's going slower and you can see individual rungs in the ceiling fan? That's your eyes adapting so that you're almost seeing the actual frequency of the fan. You are sampling that frequency. It's still spinning really fast. It's just matching. Okay? So this is these are all examples of resonance. Okay? I got a video about resonance and why it's important for building bridges. Uh, and also, we'll, we'll try to do some resonance in fire. Um, first, let's do, let's do a problem. Okay, you can, you can go have a seat. Alyssa, get the lights. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we're going to do problem number 90. And then your in-class problem is to do problem number 91. Uh, you'll solve them the same way. These are, these are pretty basic problems. Uh, problem 90, you consider two sinusoidal waves traveling along a string. 
modeled as y1 of x and t equals 0 0.3 meters times sine of 4 inverse meters times x plus 3 uh, hertz times t. So that is an equation that uh, is the equation for a wave traveling on a string. That could be the equation for this wave, this wave that you saw on this string. Okay. And is this wave traveling in the positive x direction or the negative x direction? Negative x direction because we have a positive sign right there. Okay. So that's wave number one. Wave number two that we have is y2 of x and t is equal to 0 0.6 meters times sine of 8 inverse meters <coughs> times x minus 6 inverse seconds times t. So again, that could be the equation for a wave traveling on a string. And what direction is this wave going? Positive x direction, because of that negative sign right there. It tells us it's traveling in the positive x. We are asked to find what's the height of the resultant wave formed by the interference of the two waves at the position x equals 0 0.5 meters and time 0 0.2 seconds. So how do I find the amplitude of a wave uh, given its position in the time? What's that, Porter? Just plug it in. Plug those numbers in. And what do you need, need to make sure your calculator is in? Radians. Make sure your calculator is in radians. And just plug those numbers in. So let's do that. Y1 of x and t equals 0 0.3 times sine of 4 times 0 0.5 plus 3 times 0 0.2. Everybody to plug that into your calculator. Make sure you are getting these numbers. When I plug in, I get 0 0.15. What are the units that I get? times radius. So that's 3, uh, 0 0.15 meters. And then y2 of x and t It'll be in meters. You have to make sure that you use radians when you're calculating this, because if you plug it in in degrees, you'll get the wrong answer. The units here inside of the sign, those are radians. Take the sign of radians, and you get radians. But there's this 0 0.3 meters, which is the amplitude out front. So that's multiplied by the sign of the radians. The sign of something is, is units. Radians. So 0 0.3 meters. And then you plug it down here, and uh, let's see, what do we get? I got 0 0.2. So the resultant wave is the combination of both of those. So y total be 0 0.35 meters. How did I get 0.35? Because I want the resultant weight from combining these two. And do these two seem to be constructively interfering or destructively interfering? Constructive. They're adding together to give you a bigger look. 
it would be destructive if we had a negative amplitude here. Increase a little bit. Wave size. Problem number 91, solved almost exactly the same way. Just different numbers, and I think they give you a phase of level. Any questions on that? Yes. It, it'd, be, it'd be lower. Uh, the, the total amplitude would decrease. Any other preguntas? No?